less than the actual level. Just as a side note, other bubble chambers may be used. For example, if monitoring groundwater, a long cylindrical chamber with a much smaller volume is used. We'll now take a look at some of the common questions about the CBS and, in general, bubblers. In the event the site is dry, the CBS will initiate a measurement, take an ambient barometric pressure reading, and measure the pressure in the tube. It will compare the two measurements and determine that they are equal and that no additional pump strokes are required. If this occurs, the unit will provide a status message that indicates the water level is too low because there is no water. The OT CBS can purge by either executing SDI-12 commands or by using the purge button located on the exterior housing. When the CBS is powered up, the unit will begin a five-minute purge sequence equal to about 400 pump strokes. Now let's say the bubble chamber is buried or clogged. The CBS will initiate a measurement, start pumping, and push compressed air into the measuring tube. If bubbles are not allowed to escape the bubble chamber, pressure will build up in the pump. In the event it exceeds 1.6 bar, the CBS will automatically switch off to protect the pump and pressure cell. In this case, the sensor in unable to complete a measurement. This would generate a status message that indicates the pressure was exceeded. So during the next measurement interval, the CBS will automatically initiate another measurement. Now let's briefly, co briefly cover installation and setup. Setting up the CBS is really quite simple. There is no need to break out a laptop or a special communication module, nor spend a lot of time. Sensor setup is essentially carried out by using the dip switches on the outside of the device and wiring the unit with the desired interface. The compact bubble sensor supports SDI-12 extended commands to enter local gravitational acceleration and local water temperature. While the compact bubble sensor is not difficult to set up, programming loggers can be a bit more tricky, especially if you have multiple sensors connected. To assist with programming these units, first think about the time it takes for all connected sensors to the data logger to complete a measurement. For example, if you have a multi-parameter sonde, a precipitation gauge, and a compact bubble sensor connected, the minimum measurement interval would then be dictated by how long it takes each, each sensor to complete a measurement. For example, if the sonde requires one minute to complete a measurement and the precipitation gauge has an instantaneous measurement available and the compact bubble sensor requires 53 seconds, the minimum measuring interval would be two minutes. Also take note of the sensor's address if using SCI-12. The sensor address and the data logger's address using SCI-12 need to match. If using SCI-12, the sensor's response includes more than just the water level that's been measured. It also includes air temperature and an error indicator or status message in the SCI-12 string. The CBS may be powered through the data logger or through an independent power supply. Setting up the measuring tube can be completed without difficulty. Cutting the measuring tube with a tube cutter or straight blade knife works well to ensure the cut is clean and, most importantly, square. The more jagged a cut is, the more likely the tube could leak. A serrated knife might be tempting to use but should be avoided. Even a hairline split can cause a leak. The measurement tube should be cut to fit. If there are coils, loops, or depressions in the measuring tube. This can act as a resting spot for moisture in the tube and result in potential problems down the road. While CBS does not require a desiccant, if there is water in the tube from the installation process, it may collect in these areas and affect the measurement. Also, when preparing the measuring tube for installation, ensure the maximum measuring tube length for the specific measuring tube is observed. Most measuring tubes can run approximately 330 feet. Installation of a bubble chamber is relatively simple. The measuring tube is inserted into two fittings, one attached to the sensor housing and one at the bubble chamber. The measuring tube should be fully inserted into the swedge lock tube fitting. Once in place, the fitting should be tightened until snug and then tightened one quarter turn more to ensure it's secure. Note, 
No additional adapters are required for installation. The bubble chamber should ideally be installed in a low flow area of the stream where there is the greatest water depth during low flow conditions. The bubble chamber should be installed with its tip facing the direction of flow. The position of the bubble chamber and direction of the tip help to minimize flow disturbance around the chamber and reduce resulting current pressures over and under pressures. Also, horizontal alignment helps to ensure accurate readings. To assist in the installation of the bubble chamber, the bubble pot can be rotated by 15 degrees in any direction. The bubble chamber should be within 5 degrees of horizontal alignment. When immersing the bubble chamber with the connected measuring tube, the sensor should be activated and the piston pump should be purging. The compact bubble sensor will initiate a commissioning purge cycle each time it's connected to power. During this commissioning period, the CBS conducts 400 pump strokes in about 5 minutes. We'll now address some of the common problems previous customers have encountered, encountered with the CBS. SDI-12 communication. One of the most common problems when it comes to SDI-12 sensors is having a sensor with a different SDI-12 address than the logger's program. This is especially true when there are more than one SDI-12 sensor connected to the same bus. Most SDI-12 sensors will have a default sensor address of zero. Since with SDI-12 sensors you may have multiple parameters available on the data string, problems may also arise from not having the desired parameters stored in the logger. For example, if you want to log level, temperature, and status, ensure you have written the data logger program so that the parameter number matches the placement of the actual SDI-12 response string. The CBS generates a status message for each and every measurement. When the measurement is valid, the status message is zero. This could happen in the event, um, let's take a look at an example. In the event a site is dry, the CBS would generate a status of one, indicating that the water level is too low for the CBS to take a measurement. The CBS supports over 10 status messages. Logging these messages can save you time determining what might be going on at the measuring site or if this issues are also common. To avoid unwanted moisture in the tube, ensure the measuring tube is not kinked or coiled. Also ensure the measuring tube is installed with a continuous drop towards the bubble chamber. This prevents moisture from collecting in a depression. The measuring tube needs to be dry during the installation of the bubble chamber and commissioning of the sensor. Otherwise, it could negatively influence your reading. For example, you may see noise in your data or spikes that do not relate to an actual water level change. So if the measuring tube should be kept free of moisture, then why does the CBS not require a desiccant? Not all bubble sensors require a desiccant. Desiccant is needed when the capacity of air to hold water vapor is exceeded. This occurs when compressed air is continuously pushed out through the measurement tube. Remember, in the case of the compact bubble sensor, the unit pumps only when it's in a measurement mode. Another common question. What happens if water freezes in the tube? With the CBS, there should not be any moisture, ideally, in the tube for it to freeze, providing the unit was installed correctly. Also, by using a bubble chamber, this can prevent water from entering into the tube. So if water does freeze in the tube, it would prevent the CBS from being able to push out air through the bubble chamber and therefore would result in an overload pressure. And you would receive a status message. Another common problem is leaks. So let's take a look at where they would occur. Leaks are most commonly found at a tube fitting. As mentioned earlier, leaks can result from cutting the tube with a serrated knife or even from cutting the tube with scissors. To check for leaks before connecting the bubble chamber, place your finger over the end of the measuring tube and press and hold the purge button on the housing of the CBS. The CBS will purge until the pressure inside the unit reaches 1.6 bar. At this time, you will hear the pump motor shut off. This indicates the system is leak-free. 
If you are checking for leaks after the bubble chamber is installed, press the purge button on the outside of the housing until you see bubbles coming from the bubble chamber in the water. Sensor lag has been an issue for bubblers in the past. This results when high pressure is against the bubbler system. This may cause the measured pressure in the tube to be less than the actual hydrostatic pressure of the water column above the bubble chamber. This generally occurs during rapid increases in stage. When this occurs, water enters and rises up into the tube. The bubbler will attempt to push out the water with compressed air. However, it may take numerous measuring intervals to do so successfully. With the CBS, however, this is not an issue due to its quick reaction and intelligent pumping strategy. Since the sensor is looking at each measurement individually and specifically addressing the required number of pump strokes, the unit will generate enough compressed air to push bubbles out of the end of the measuring tube even if the stage is increasing significantly. The CBS can detect a water level change of up to 10 feet in 14 seconds when there is up to 16 feet above the bubble chamber. We'd like to thank you for listening to the recorded event of the CBS webinar.